There he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo, this is a stud, too. Good gosh. This is a hog. Yep, there he is. Come on, come on. He's going to shake his head one more time, I bet you. Nope. Beautiful. Folks, stay tuned. <laughs> Y'all come fishing with us. We're going to play with these Santee Cooper bass a little while today. Mm -mm -mm. Look at the mouth on that beast. First place we're going to fish this morning. Um, this is this is middle of February. It's cold. The water's cold. Um, the bass are just going to feed real sporadically throughout the day. A little bit here and a little bit there. Um, but what I like to fish this time of year are little <clears throat> sharp drop-offs. For instance, this right here, up by that cypress tree, it's only two feet of water, but then it drops here into 10 feet. And for these lakes, for Santee Cooper, that's a pretty severe drop. These aren't like mountain lakes where, you know, the water drops from zero to 75 feet. Um, but you want to just look for little hard banks. Anywhere you got pine trees like this, that's, that's what I call a hard bank. And anywhere you got a hard bank like that, oaks and pine trees, you're going to have some little sharp drop-offs, little sandy drop-offs. And if you can find grass or stumps on those drop-offs, drop that's even better. But um, we're just going to fish with this little crankbait for a little while. I'm going to fish it kind of slow, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to fish up next to the bank. I'm going to fish out here where it drops and hope for the best. <laughs> there he is. There's the first one. There's the first one. There's the first one. He's hooked good. We're just going to swing him in the boat. All right. He's not a brute like we're after, but hey, he's a bass, right? Nice fish. Hopefully the first of many, many more. He's about what? 
two and a half, three pounds. See you later. That fish was right on that little drop right there. We got a point of grass right here that drops off from two feet and we're in six right now. Which like I say, that's a pretty that's a pretty extreme drop for Sandy Cooper. And he was right here by the boat, right where that thing drops off into six feet of water. So, and I got a feeling he's not the only fish here. I fished this the other day. I caught four pretty nice fish in about 10 minutes. So he, he's not alone. But I may switch to that one. There he is right there. There's a the second one. This one might be a little bit better right here. About the same size. A little bit better. Yeah. There's one. Oh yeah, good fish, good fish. I'm just gonna grab him with my hand. Boy, he ate that tank bait too, didn't he? He swallowed it to his goozle. Come here, that's a nice fish. That's it, I got some hook outs here. I'm gonna use and I'm gonna try not to do. When you deep hook a fish like that, if you can kick, if you can keep those hooks away from those gills, He'll usually revive and do heal pretty quick. Those gills are very fragile. So you want to easily get those hooks out when they're deep hooked like this. Very nice fish. He'll make it. Ooh, there he is. Another fish right off of that little grass point. Boy, he in here now. Hey, in here. Put him all in the top of the head and all. <laughs> all right. Another one bites the dust. Here we go. All right, now we've caught, we want big boy now. We want big one. See how we're hitting that little grass in there? There's a little bit, a little pot of grass right there. I don't know if it's eel grass or what, but all three of those fish have come out of that little patch of grass. We want that crankbait. <clears throat> we want that crankbait just barely bumping the tops of that eel grass. Now what we're doing, these fish are coming off of the edge of that grass and we're staying out from the grass on purpose because we want to fish it from the, it's like eating a, it's like eating a bowl of grips. You start at the edge of the bowl, that way you don't burn yourself. Same thing here, we're starting with the edge of that pod of grass and working our way in. We want to catch the fish on the outside of it, work right into it and there's probably some fish in the middle of it too. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to stay away from it for a few more minutes. Then we'll start moving in and fishing the, like the interior of it. I love the fact that he's allowed me to make a living in and around his creation. I've been a, a charter captain on these lakes for a little over 15 years now, and I still love it as much as when I first started. Um, I love being in the woods and on the water. And I love seeing stuff just like that right there, that sun shining on that saw grass and this pretty water. Vegetation starting to green up. It's beautiful. There's so much fish habitat out here right now. And when they got a place to live and when they got a place to feed, uh, for some reason they get a lot bigger. And right now in Sandy Cooper, you got some hydrilla, you got a lot of eel grass, this gator weed. Um, Mill fall, all kinds of different vegetation. And I'm telling you what, the fish populations have boomed. They've really flourished. The bass and uh, I know last year, local fisherman Brent Riley, he had uh, 40 pounds with five fish. Two of them over 10 pounds in a, in a club tournament. Um, but I don't know how many 30, 35 pound stringers were caught last, not just last year, the last five or six years. Um, so Sandy Cooper is definitely back. It's full of stripers, full of big slab crappie, 
um, tournament last weekend in the upper lake. Seven fish weigh in with the crappie, and it took a 2.49 pound average to win. They had almost 18 pounds with seven fish. The biggest one was 2.89, so the lakes are really, really healthy right now. Uh, all year long on my brush piles, I've been catching some of the biggest slab crappie I've ever seen. They're bigger here now. I'd venture to say the crappie are bigger than anywhere else in the world probably right now. I mean, it's not everywhere you go and catch a fish over two pounds. Mississippi or anywhere, Grenada, they're just giant. They're just so healthy. There's so much for them to eat. There's so many places for them to spawn and make babies. And uh, that grass puts, puts a lot of oxygen in the water too. Takes all the bad, filters all the bad stuff out of the water. The lakes are just really healthy right now. Good time to fish Sandy Cooper. Okay, there's another one. There's another one. Feels like a pretty sporty fish. Well, I tell you what, this water here is so muddy you could track a rabbit across it, you know it? We still caught him. We switched up to a crank bait. One of a sharp deep running crankbait. Look at what we have. Oh boy, he can get off at me. We got him. Alright. What we did, we came out here to some more open water. Switched off to a little bit different bait. Um, bumping the bottom with that bait. But what we did, we came out here in open water. Uh, switched over to a little deeper diving bait. Fishing some woody structure. And look at there what we what we found. He's about four, four and a half pounds. He's a chunky thing. He's been feeding on something good out here in this open water. Um, and we might just catch one bigger than that. We're gonna turn him loose. This water is so muddy. Look at that. This water's so muddy you could track a rabbit across the top of it. But even so, catch a nice one. There he is. There he is. Oh, this feels like another pretty good one. Another pig. Oh, yeah. Oh, a striper. Nice striper. Nice striper. Nice striper. Oh, yeah. Now, we're fishing in the current now. This time of year, these fish are, um, these fish are heading upstream. He's falling. What's this guy doing? Man. Yay! <laughs> oh boy. Man, this is another pig. Golly. Now that other one didn't pull all that. Woo, this one is though. <laughs> cold water or no cold water, he's gonna pull. Oh yeah. Uh-huh, come here. Come here, oh this is another hog. Golly. See, now we hadn't caught but a couple so far. But we got a couple of good ones. That's what I say, but oh no. Come here. Winter time on Santee Cooper is a great time to catch big bass. Again on the pointer. Look at that. Lovely. <laughs> Golly. If I'm gonna only catch a couple of fish. These are the kind of fish I want to catch. All right. Like that little isolated piece of vegetation right there. See that? <laughs> oh, it's a jack. Mr. Jack. That son of a gun will cost you more money in fish and tackle. He's got those teeth. He'll break everything you got off. But I, oh my gosh. Looked like something a little bigger than him hit him. <laughs> Golly, maybe another jackfish. Oh well, he's had a bad day somewhere down the line. But you know, you laugh at these old jackfish, but in my opinion, that's one of the best eating fish in the lake. You take that thing <clears throat> and you, you don't flame out like you would do normally with other fish. You just, you kind of stake him across the body about that thick after you scale him, of course. Just cut him like that gut him and you fry those thin pieces of fish and 
they are bony. They got little Y bones for rib bones, but if you cut the pieces thin enough and fry them, it fries out all those little bones. And the only, the only thing you don't eat is the little backbone, but that is delicious, delicious. Pure white, those jacks are. I love them. In fact, I might take him back to Black's camp and let Captain Carl knock the hide off of him, and that's gonna be my supper tonight. <laughs> I was just getting ready to pick the lure up into the boat. Came in the canal here, tied on this crankbait in order to try to catch a striper. Kind of do a mixed bag, if you will. And I'd be doggone if we hadn't caught two. This time of year you can catch stripers and bass together a lot of times, but I like to um, get towards the middle of the day and the bass bite slows down a little bit, come here in the canal and catch a few stripers too. That's one thing about February. You go out early, catch you a few nice bass, then you can fall back to the canal here, catch some nice stripers too. Um, the striped bass have made a heck of a recovery in Santee Cooper. Um, the South Carolina Striped Bass uh, stakeholders committee was formed and there were a lot of creel changes, a lot of season changes, um, they changed the limit around, uh, but anyway, and we've had, and I think this had more to do with it than anything else, we've had several years of good spawns, really good spawns where a lot of eggs were laid, but um, they've made a major comeback in Santee Cooper, now they've, they've got to be 26 inches to keep now, um, and there's talk of, of changing that around a little bit and maybe the first four or five you catch. But anyway, they made a heck of a comeback. The lake is full of stripers and um, Lord knows they're a sporty fish. They pull. <laughs>